Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Light Up a Life, Emanate Health Foundation's annual tree lighting ceremony benefiting Emanate Health Hospice. This year will mark our second virtual presentation of Light Up a Life. We know how important this event is for those grieving the loss of a loved one, and this year again is no exception. Our hospice offers both an inpatient facility and home-based services to assist patients and families in dealing with all aspects of terminal illness. We are very proud that we are able to provide safe and compassionate hospice care. And this event supports our efforts to continue providing that special service for our community. Thank you all for joining us this evening to remember and honor your loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce City of Covina Council Member and a member of the Emanate Health Board of Directors, Walter Allen III, who will lead us all in the invocation. God, with you, there is no darkness. Your character has no shadows. You are pure and good. Yet in our broken world, we see so much darkness around us. Pain, sickness, and disease are in our community and in many of our homes. Bring your light and your restoring presence to the dark places in our lives. Bring your hope to the hearts that feel defeated. Bring your love and compassion to those in pain. Give us faith to say with the psalmist, Lord, you light my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. May your light of hope shine in the darkness for families today. Show us glimpses of your presence with us and the comfort you bring. In the busyness of today, help us to take a moment to be still and sit with you, to slow down, breathe deeply, and release our burdens to your strong hands. You are trustworthy, good, and true, and we thank you for caring for us so deeply and beautifully. Open our eyes to see you at work today. Give us your light. Amen. Thank you, Walt, for your inspirational words. It is my honor to recognize this year's Light Up a Life honorees, our very own Emanate Health Hospice volunteers. Volunteers are truly the heart of hospice and have always been an extremely important part of the Emanate Health Hospice team. You go beyond your personal duties to help others in need by providing countless hours of your time to support the work of our hospice program and all patients. Volunteers help by providing valuable assistance at all levels of skills, whether providing administrative services behind the scenes or making deep connections with patients and families one-on-one. -on -one. Patients and families rely heavily on the volunteers for additional support during end-of-life care, whether it be companionship, emotional and spiritual support, assist in feeding, reading, playing games, or just being present to talk and listen. Our volunteers feel a deep sense of satisfaction knowing that they made a difference in someone else's life, and at the same time, feel they've made a real significant contribution to their community. We've asked a few of our volunteers to share with us what they do and to tell us a little about their experiences as a volunteer here at Emanate Health Hospice. I've been volunteering here for 25 years now, and when I first started, I started in the, in the unit volunteering, helping the, the nurses with the families and the patients. And I then kind of branched out and started helping with the bereavement program. I worked mainly in the unit, visiting the patients in our 10-bed unit and I minister to the family as well. We look at the family and the patient as one. I also see the, the validity of a spiritual care person to be a presence to the nurses who need 
someone there for them as well. The job is very stressful. Currently, I'm doing bereavement phone calls. We um, follow our loved ones of the patient that has passed, and we do that for up to a year. And I've talked to so many uh, family members, and they say we really appreciate all the things that volunteers do. And at the end of the day, I can go home and say I did something good for someone. And it gives you that personal satisfaction. In 2012, January, uh, I received a letter from, from hospice uh, for a three-day volunteer orientation. When I took the orientation, everybody talked about what they were doing here in hospice, and, and I right away uh, loved that area of the spiritual care. And most of the people that I serve was people in their homes, the Spanish-speaking community. I had a patient about four years ago. She was in the unit um, at least two weeks, maybe a little over, and she would say, I'm not a religious person, but you're welcome to come in and we'll just talk. As she got sicker, she asked me to pray with her. It's just nice to see how the Lord works when someone says, I'm not a believer, and then at the end, they do believe. It's not so much what you do for the patient, because a lot of times they're sleeping anyway, but it's what you do for the family members, because again, they want someone to talk to, to listen to them, and know that they're not going through this alone. One particular uh, patient that I got very close to was she was, she reminded me so much of my grandmother. She had two sons who live in, lived in New York City and had not come out to visit her while she was, while she was in, in, uh, in hospice. And she was so uh, appreciative of, of, of me just spending time with her. And uh, we just got to have a lot of fun together. I mean, it was, she was just, she was an up lady even though she was in a terrible situation physically. I would come in on days that I wasn't assigned to be here just to see her because I knew that I think I was making a difference in life. I was the one that was in awe of the miracles that I experienced in every family that I, that I serve. My relationship with the nurses and the social workers, it's fantastic. It's like your own little personal friends, and they're very interested in you. They really appreciate what volunteers do. They're the greatest group of men and women that I've ever had the pleasure to be associated with. This is not an easy job, and they take it with grace, dignity, and much love. There's no separation from staff or a volunteer. We're all part of the same group. I went through some personal tragedies in my life uh, a, a number of years ago, and I temporarily uh, told the hospice volunteer coordinator that I think I needed to take a break. I wasn't sure I could do this and I ended up coming back within a month after I said that to her and I told her I didn't realize how important this hospice means to me and the support that I, that I get from it and from the community of people who work here and I saw the importance of this facility and the people who work here and the hospice program and therefore it will It'll always be my home away from home. On behalf of the entire staff, patients, and their families, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank those volunteers and the many others who volunteer their time at Emanate Health Hospice to bring love and care to the families coping with the loss of a loved one. We are truly blessed to have such dedicated volunteers working at our hospice. Without the support of these wonderful volunteers, 
we would not be able to accomplish as much as we do. For this and so much more, thank you for all you do for our patients in the San Gabriel Valley. I'd like to now introduce Dr. Irma Elisheva Diaz, Bereavement and Volunteer Coordinator at Emanate Health Hospice and Home Care to talk about bereavement and the program that we offer. Good evening. We all know that there are different types of grief. However, losing a loved one has to be one of the most difficult and traumatic experiences that one faces through life's journey. It is not easy to navigate through grief alone. While it is true we will never forget our loved ones, we can honor their memory and legacy by learning how to live again. Bringing clarity to the many emotions that one feels and having those to talk with that can resonate with your loss can help more than you know. Here at Emanate Health Hospice and Home Care, we have a robust bereavement program that offers grief group sessions throughout the year to all our surrounding communities at no charge to the bereaved. In our groups, no one is ever imposed upon to share until they are ready. A story comes to mind of a lady that was driving home from identifying her teenage daughter at the coroner's office. She had heard about our groups and decided she would take a chance to see if we would be meeting that night. She drove straight to our hospice and it just so happened we were right in the middle of a group session. She came in and simply quietly sat there. She listened intently and did not share what she was going through until the very end of our time that evening. The room seemed to freeze with a sincere compassion that was expressed by all present, some verbally and others silently. She shared with us how she thought she would lose her mind that night, but instead, she found a way to survive. It would be this group that would help carry her throughout the next year. If you have lost a loved one and are struggling through the process of grief, do not hesitate to join us. The compassion and understanding you will receive will help you navigate through this time in your life. Finally, as we face the holidays, grieving becomes all the more challenging. Well-meaning family and friends can sometimes place expectations upon us that we simply cannot meet. The pressure to chat politely and behave normally can actually trigger the opposite reaction in one that is grieving. It is important to remember that these feelings are normal and part of the grieving process. A simple solution to this is to communicate what you are feeling with your family and friends. Explain to them that you may have to step away from the festivities to have a moment if you need it. Tell them ahead of time that you may leave early. Communication is key because it will alleviate the pressure you may feel to please everyone that loves you and is concerned about you. Give yourself permission to feel what you need to feel and never forget that the memories of them is what will help you keep them alive in your heart. Do not hesitate to talk about them as those memories stir within you. Consider including a picture of them at the dinner table or in the family room where everyone congregates. This is a beautiful way to feel their presence. We hope you will consider joining one of our support groups. In the meantime, stay well and know that we at Emanate Health Hospice and Home Care are here for you and your families. May the memories of your loved ones bring peace and comfort to your hearts this holiday season. May God bless you. Thank you, Irma, for your presentation. Phone numbers to call for information or to join a bereavement grief group will be available on screen at the end of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the names of the individuals being memorialized by friends and loved ones in this year's Emanate Health Hospice Light Up a Life Honor Roll. Those we love don't go away, they walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near. So loved, so missed so very dear. Perhaps they are not stars, but rather openings in heaven, where the love of our lost ones shines down to let us know they are with us. In memory of Eduardo Jose Garcia Wilkes, honored by Lisa and Mitchell First. 
in memory of Sally A. King, honored by James King. In memory of Richard and Linda McNeil, honored by Livy and Lee Della Victoria. These wreaths embrace your memory in the never-ending circle of life. In memory of Jody Collette, honored by Jack and Connie Watson. In memory of Richard and Linda McNeil, honored by Livy and Lee Della Victoria. In memory of Hugh and Barbara Snyder, honored by Jack and Connie Watson. In memory of Amy and Bob Watson, honored by Jack and Connie Watson. When you see a snow white feather drifting on the breeze, you will know your angel sent a sign to put your mind at ease. In memory of Cecilia Pearl Gates, honored by Jim and Angela Gates. In memory of Kathy Jepson, honored by Bruce Jepson. In memory of Martha Sue Scoville, honored by Dennis H. Scoville. In memory of Anthony Scolino, honored by Brian Davis. In memory of Donna Scolino, honored by Brian Davis. In memory of Betty Wade, honored by Sue Montgomery. The dove brings us peace and carries your spirit close to our hearts. In memory of Patricia Allen. In memory of Patricia Pat Allen. In memory of Daniel Ambriz. In memory of Armando Barajas. In memory of Gerhard Bechtler. In memory of Beverly Britt. In memory of Violet Chadwick, Nana in memory of Teresa Compton, in memory of Carmelia Marie Crum, in memory of Mildred Denny, in memory of Winifred and Louis Drino, in memory of Edward English, in memory of Sandra Jean Fletcher, in memory of Janice Garnett, in memory of Mike Garvey, in memory of Marion and Cecil Gilson. In memory of Joyce Goodhart. In memory of Huey Liang Ho. In memory of Michael Jamie. In memory of Kathy. In memory of Diane Kent. In memory of John Paul Lauer. In memory of Richard Lawton in memory of Pastor Bill and Treva Lair, in memory of Garrett Lewis, in memory of Jean and Louis Marino, in memory of Eleanor Olson, in memory of Agnes Aggie Arose, in memory of Thomas Paraha, in memory of Carlin Povero, in memory of Shalela Quick. In memory of Joel Ramirez. In memory of Ron Russick. In memory of Jesus Jesse Saldana. In memory of Alice Sanchez. In memory of Anthony Sculino. In memory of Donna Sculino. In memory of Ron Simmons. In memory of Phil Sitkowski. In memory of Robert Suhadolnik. In memory of Art Toll. In memory of Eric Torrenueva. In memory of Lucina Vidales. In memory of Tony Villanueva. In memory of William Volpe. In memory of Clarence and Frida Willison. In memory of Vincent Worth. In memory of Molly Wong. In memory of Glenn Wolverton. There are some who bring a light so great to the world that even after they have gone, the light remains. In appreciation of 
Rebecca Stewart. In memory of Elsie Antonich, Paul Francis and Margaret M. Barr, Arch and Elsa Bittner, Ethel Cady, Guillermo and Maria Cepeda, Shalom Shantara, Jackie Collins, Diane L. Colucci, David M. Kopel, Robert Kozad, Sue Kozad, Harry Krusberg, Chan On Dang, Gabriel Rivera Duran, Gordon Ellingson, Jeff Ellingson, Edward English, Dawn and Grace Farrar, Donna Grace Farrar and Rich, Lewis and Nancy Farrar, Lewis Formia, Ella B. Fruget, Fern Gorell, Ted Gorell, Miyoko Graf, Jim Grams, Helen C. Hawkins, Judith Hawkins, Roy R. Helsley Jr., Manny Hernandez III, Terence G. Hoey, Charles Thomas Hoffman, Michael Jennings, Viola Jennings, David Kelly, Octavia Kelly, Edith Kensinger, Larry K. Llewellyn, Mark Lisberg, Craig E. Lyon, Matthias P. Malouf, Keiko Matsunaga, Betty Maxwell, Regina McPartland, Jean McQuig, Eulalia Lola Mendoza, Lola Mendoza, Heather Roxanne Manking, Harold Mitch Mitchell, Rayco H. Moreno, Lonnie E. Nelson, Norman C. Nelson, Marie B. Noland, Anne Novakovich, Robert J. Palmer, Manuel Pestano, Richard Plate, Ronald Plate, Ching Po and Victor Po, Romulo Quintanilla, Beth Richards, Juanita Sanchez, Enid Shellac, Gail Scott, Linda Schaefer, Earl Russell Smith, Terry Anthony Smith, Paul Strazare, Sam Strazare, Robert Suhadolnik, Elsie Teeple, Chris and Rosella Trujillo, Benjamin Tyra, Elisa Vanderholst, Tina Vanderholst, Sally Weagle, Deverell Whetstone, June Whetstone, Ruth J. Wilson, Lawrence Wynn, Nancy Wong. For those we honor and hold in memory, may the brilliance of the light give you peace with this tree lighting ceremony. Memories are the pictures to our soul. In memory and in honor of all our patients, we value your time with us, and we are honored to have been given the opportunity to know your loved one. Forever in our hearts, the staff and volunteers at Emanate Health Hospice.
Let us once again light the majestic hospice tree on behalf of the lives of loved ones we celebrate tonight. And as a beacon of hope to all of the families that will come to Emanate Health Hospice for comfort and care. Each light represents a life worthy of celebration while ensuring that others coping with end of life receive the compassionate care they need. The majestic hospice tree located on the front lawn of Emanate Health Hospice will be lit starting tonight and will continue through the holidays. Our hospice team invites everyone to come by to take a look at the beautiful lights. In closing, I'd like to thank you again for supporting Emanate Health Hospice. May you and your loved ones have a blessed and safe holiday season.